G'day Jabronis, it is The Verd back with you again. Welcome here to our week 6 game for the Major PL against Daniki or Dan or Jaden Yuki as he is here and Rosa Ardenborg. If you guys recall, Dan and I, uh, we have played in the NPL Minors. Both times we played, I was able to come up with a W, but this is completely different. He has a very good team. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting game. I don't have Zerka Street this time, so anything's possible. So. Uh, if you guys are hyped for this video, make sure you like it, subscribe, all that good shit. Uh, right now, we are on a pretty ridiculous run in the Major PL. We're currently 5-0. and oh. I believe Dan at this stage is either 3-2 and two or 4-1. and one. I can't remember exactly which one it is, but I felt that he was actually one of the people that was, you know, the closest to be able to knock me off. Like, I felt my good run of form and luck was going to end. And as you can see on my screen, there's a Glalie. <laughs> um, Glalie was kind of here, it didn't really need to be here for this matchup. I, I mainly brought Glalie because, um, <laughs> it was stupid. I, I mainly brought Glalie to this matchup because Dan had a Dragonite and a Seismitoad in his team, and I felt Seismitoad made sense because I had a Charizard X, and Dragonite made sense because it's a Dragonite, but he didn't bring either of them, so it was pretty much useless. In hindsight, I maybe would have brought something like Togekiss, um, but I decided against that, just feeling that he had a lot of ways to switch into Tokis, as you can see from his team right now, but, uh, his team he brought, like, Escav, um, Halucha, Mega Beedrill, Nihilego, Victini, and Coco, and I brought a bulky Sugarberry Drill, basic aim of it was to set up Brock's turn one, because, uh, since I had the, uh, Sugarberry, I could take a hit from, uh, Scavalier, from Beedrill, from Nihilego, and from Coco, so basically, against um, four of his six mods, I got up Rocks turn one, and against his team, since he didn't bring a spinner, <coughs> or a defogger, rocks were huge. Now, even if he led with Nihilego and went for his rocks, it wouldn't be that bad for me, and plus he'd have to be sashed to risk his Nihilego like that, which I feel like he wouldn't do, because we could just trade rocks, and I could just go for the spin, break his sash, and get rid of my rocks. So I don't know, it just felt like, you know... <laughs> Because he didn't bring Frost Ass either, he didn't have a spin blocker, and his spin blocker just loses the drill, so it was that. But I brought a uh, quite spadef Zard, it was kind of designed to be able to take some hits from Coco. Actually didn't really have like barely any attack investment, which you're going to see is kind of meh. <laughs> I wish I'd kind of given an attack investment, but at the same time I think it's uh, pretty solid the way that it is. It's got a Dragon Dance, Roost, Dragon Claw, and Flare Blitz. Then I've got Z Rain Dance, Manaphy again, well Wartarium Z, so... It's either designed for rain dance, or if I need to fire off a Z Scald, then that's, you know, really important. But I'm running at max speed, so I can speed test Scarfatini. Um, I've got Ice Beam, Scald, and Energy Ball as my coverage for his team. He didn't bring Delmire, which is re I found really interesting. I, I get to the extent that obviously you can want, like, um, potential fodder for some of my mods, but I just feel like Delmire has such a good matchup. I didn't really have a lot of good switch-ins to it, but he didn't bring it, so it was kind of wild. That was the other reason why Glalie was there, because, like... Glalie murdered half his team, he just didn't bring the things that Glalie could kill. Um, Kofag is a Fizz Def set, it is, uh, what was it, it was Shadow Ball, um, no, it was Hex, Will-O-Wisp, Calm Mind, and Pain Split. I was tossing up between a Rest Talk set, but, uh, decided against it in the end, and I think I forgot halfway through the game that I wasn't Rest, that I was actually Pain Split, because there's a turn where he goes, I think, um, hard into his Tapu Koko. Um, on on a play where I go for another car mine, if I'd click paints with that turn, potentially, or no, it was the turn where Coco went for, oh, uh, you, you'll see, there's, there's a turn when Coco comes in against Kofag, and if I'd realised I had paint split, I definitely would have clicked it, because it would have put me in a much stronger position in that game, so, you'll see when it happens, but it's pretty stupid. Um, my Scholar Pizza is actually a Chillan Berry set. I'm running Protect 3 attacks. I think it's Poison Jab, Mega Horn, and Earthquake. Um, I really wanted Rock Slide, but I decided against it for some reason. I don't know. I, I chose Mega Horn mainly because of Lanoon. I didn't actually have a lot of Lanoon checks, so my basic plan was using uh, whatever was in against Lanoon to attack it. That way, when the berry popped, it would always be in range of Scholar's Mega Horn. In hindsight, if any of my mons attacked a Lanoon as it tried to set up Scully's Poison Jab, would put it in range, and Rockslide would have been nice for the Beedrill, as well as the um, 
the D Knight if it had come. But then again, like Jab does a decent amount of D Knight. And then Glalie, the god, uh, was a Charty Berry designed in a way where it could take a plus one Nihil Lego power gem. So either Specs or Beast boosted Nihil Lego power gem. And then I was rocking Ice Beam, Freeze Dry, Hidden Power, Fire, and Earthquake. I was running like a minus attack nature, but that was still enough to where Earthquake could knock out Nihil Lego 100%. So, my basic plan with this team, I suppose, was getting up Rocks with Drill, and then looking at matchup, I saw that, you know, he, uh, realistically, because he didn't bring Lanoon, Kofag had a massive chance to just win by itself. Being able to Calm Mind up, being able to potentially Pain Split on the uh, Coco and whatnot gave me a really good chance to break through him. Scholar P could also just clean right, like, quite well late game. And the main thing was, because he didn't bring Seismitoad, he didn't really have a switch in for Charizard. But I figured uh, early on, looking at the way that his team was orientated, that his best way to deal with it was like hard Nihilego most of the time, or potentially hard Coco, predicting either the Dragon or Fire move respectively. So I just had to play around that as best that I could. But I'm going to get to the battle now because I've been rambling for long enough. This team as well, I like whipped it up five minutes and then got a gen and then told like we had a few issues with the genning just because I wanted to make sure the Glalie sped tied with the uh, Dragonite. But I am going to leave my drill. Like I said, I am very, very fat as he's going to lead with his Escavalier. Now, I'm not worried about this. There is no move Escavalier can click here that kills me, which means I get my guaranteed rocks up, and that is honestly exactly what I wanted to hear. <laughs> Free rocks against a guy that brought no defog support and a fire type and a bug type sounds pretty darn good to me, as he's going to go for the knock, and uh, this tells me he's a very, very invested Escav, because that always does half to me. Uh, on this turn, I was tossing up the play I wanted to make, but I looked and I saw that um, Escavalier gets like no rock move, but it can click so I go hard into my Charizard here. Uh, there is no move he can click that really kills me. He doesn't get natural gifts or anything like that. So uh, I actually predict him this turn. There's no reason for him to sack his um, Escavalier when I still have Scolipede and Drill in the back. So I actually predict him to want to go into Nihilego on this turn. It was a bit of a 50-50, but uh, I do get it correct. And this is where having the um, like having no attack investment is going to come back to bite me in the ass because if I did have attack investment, then uh, Charizard will be able to easily pick off this Nihilego on this turn, but due to me being a more bulky Zard spread, as you're going to see, this Declaw is not able to take out Nihilego. Now, this also could have been down to him running defensive bulk, but it, it wasn't. Like I, I believe I wasn't even able to knock it out uh, at all. So I'm going to harness my Drill, because it makes sense for me to go for Sludge Wave or Power Gem on this turn. Um, no other play makes any sense. Uh, he went hard near Halego also because I assumed he was Scarfed, because if I went for a DD, then he'd be able to outspeed. So, hard as Drew. I know that he's probably going to try and um, preserve this. I didn't know if he'd go Holucha this turn, but I had a fully health Kofag, so I didn't care. So I just choose the Earthquake here. I could have gone for the Iron Head, but Earthquake uh, was going to do a tremendous amount to anything on his team. And it turns out he actually goes hard into his Escavalier, which is pretty bad for Dan. As you're going to see, uh, Earthquake's looking like a 2 KO. Uh, I believe this might have been a roll, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I am able to fire off the EQ here and we are actually going to be able to take it out. So I'm not sure if that was a roll, it looked like it wasn't, it looked like a very much a 2 KO. So Drill picks up the first kill of the game. He decided to go hard into his Victini, which is interesting because, um, I mean, I, I felt like maybe, I don't know, it just, maybe Holucha would have been better there, just to be able to drain punch and kill. I don't know, it just seemed like it was free rocks damage on the teeny. He goes for blue flare as I go hard Zard, and as you can see, we eat that up. And it comes down to a few speed ties here. Um, only one of these, I want to say, matters. Uh, this one was bad for me. I go for a blitz on the teeny here, which does the damage I kind of needed. Uh, basically, almost puts it in rocks range. Um, I, I did that because it didn't really make much sense for him to sack teeny to the Zard because it was still important. So I actually predicted Coco. He gets a speed after up here. This is the turn that kind of sucks for Dan because I'm actually able to win the speed tie and get a declaw off and kill this thing. If he had won that speed tie, then I probably would have gone into my Scolipede and um, just been able to click Earthquake and knock out the Teeny. But it was more the point that he could have been Shooker. I would have to go for Mega Horn. There was a lot of variables there that um, obviously would have made it a bit trickier. But regardless, we do have to get a kill. I actually choose to go for Roost here because I feel like if Dan tries to be aggressive on this turn, predicting me to want to maybe preserve my Charizard, he might want to go for like a U-turn and Charizard can live that and then I can get my Roost up and be useful for later on. But no, he chooses to draw run and I'm just going to die. So Charizard goes down, which is unfortunate, but this is okay. We can play around these situations, Zard going down is all good, it's all part of the plan. We go into Kovag because 
Um, as far as I know, the worst thing you can do to me is knock off. I can take that and I can just willow, and he doesn't have a willow switch in now that Victini's gone. And even if Victini was still there, it's not exactly switching in on Kofag. As you see, Poison Jab is nothing because Dan messed up his EVs. Now, even if he had the right EVs, because I had access to Pain Split and because I was going for will o -Wisp, um, it didn't really matter too much, especially since his adaptability went away. That was probably the only turn where not having the EVs mattered because after this, it's a burned Beedrill without adaptability going for Poison Jabs. So it's probably going to do absolute dip regardless. And at this point, he's just fishing for a burn. Oh, sorry, not for a burn, a poison. Now, I could have just killed him with Hex this turn, but I knew that would let Coco straight in for free. And the issue with this Kofag initially was like, okay, Coco just comes in and revenges this all day. So how can I design it in a way to not like that happen? I, that's why I have Calm Mind. Um, so at this point, I figure what he's going to do, which makes the most sense, is just sack his Beedrill to allow Coco to come in. Because there's no point switching in Coco on a potential attacking move. Like, if I had clicked Hex or Shadow Ball this turn, it wouldn't have made much sense to go hard into your Coco. But he does make that risk. I mean, it's a calculated play if you know that after Rocky Helmet and Burn, you're basically dead. So he predicts me to go for another Calm Mind, which, I mean, in all fairness, I, I do make that play. Because, realistically for me, he either sacks off his Beedrill, or he makes a wild play into Coco. But the thing is, even if he goes wild into Coco, uh, Kofag is designed to be able to take a, um, a Specs, uh, Electric Train, Bruce, and Thunderbolt here. So I'm good. This is the point where I realized I should have clicked um, Pain Split. Because Pain Split, after the um, Coco attack, would have allowed me to heal up enough HP for me. Because I go to 131 down to 173. So I could have lived another hit from Coco here. Um, and what I could have done there was gone for the Pain Split, allowing me to easily live another hit from Coco and then go for Hex and kill it. Now, if that had happened, all he had left was the Nihilego, which couldn't kill me, the Holucha, which would need an SD to kill me, and the um, Beedrill, which was just getting walled. So I basically could have got a free pain split off against the um, Holucha. Everything else would have just died to the Kofag. So that was a bit of a misplay on my part. Maybe could have led to a 5 0 win, I'm not sure. But regardless, I went hard drill there to cover the Thunderbolt play. As Beedrill takes rocks damage, and then I just go for the Iron Head. Literally no reason not to click it. I felt like this turn he would go Holucha. It made sense to go Holucha here, um, since Nihilego, I believe, was... It was a, I don't know if this was a roll to live on rocks or not, but it, it doesn't live. So Drill actually picked up a kill there for the rocks. So Drill here has three kills. Took out Escav, took out Coco... Not Coco. Took out um, Beedrill, and has taken out... Um, Dig Suit. This comes in, and this is where I was like, shit, this might be over, because it is Electric Seed, which was really nice prep on Dan's part. Um, and the problem, this is where coming down to the Pain Split with Kofag would have been massive, because if I had Pain Split it, I could have done the damage with Hex, but kept myself at a, a range of HP to where I could have taken the Holucha plus two Acrobatics, but I don't. So I kind of go with a play here of, if I use Mummy, then potentially that means he won't get his Unburden Boost. That was kind of my hope process. I also kind of just want to go hard Kofag because I wanted to get the Rocky Helmet chip. Um, as that would mean that I didn't have to waste the Z move on Manaphy if I didn't want to. Like, it was... I had the opportunity to, but uh, after looking at the things, I realized the Unburden wouldn't work that way, so I was like, you know what, screw it, we have to go into Manaphy. And the only chance we really have of winning here is if he is a Jolly Holucha. Jolly Holucha only has a 6.2% chance of killing us, whereas, um... Adamant is a roll in his favor, and he's jolly. So, it was always in our favor. He had like a 6.25% chance, I think, of killing us. We had something like really low, and it doesn't work out for him, and we are gonna be able to fire off that um, Hydro Vortex. So, this is this was a huge threat, because if he had a high jump kick, we were fucked, like we were dead, but he ran Drain Punch, which made a lot of sense, because I have a tendency to run Protect on Bonds, and also with things like Kofag in the back, it's just like safer to run Drain Punch, I feel, in this matchup. So I don't blame Dan for doing that. If he had High Jump Kick, I think he would have won this game. He would have like reverse swept me, but luckily for me, he doesn't do that. And he goes in his Coco, which I kind of assumed was Scarfed, just because um, DD, um, DD, what's it called? DD Charizard, and then also Scolipede, because again, like I said, I have a tendency to run Protect on Scully to outspeed Coco. Uh, it makes complete sense for him to be Scarfed that way, so you can kind of handle Scully 100% avenging it, but I let Manaphy go down there to kind of scout what he's going to do. It looks like he is locked into Brave Bird, so that means I can go back into my drill and basically pick up this last kill. Um, there's nothing you can really do, uh, even like a Hidden Power Ground, I believe, because of my uh, special defense bulk will allow me to take it, and if he reveals a second move, it tells me he's not Scarfed. So then I can just go into my uh, Scolipede, 
and freely just go for a protect followed by a poison jab and that would have locked the game up. So we are going to take this 3-0. It was definitely a lot closer than 3-0. I feel like it was a 1-0 realistically just because Horlucha, if, um, if it had high jump kick, would have won him the game quite easily there, but I got a bit fortunate. I also think if I didn't bring fucking Glalie and I brought like, you know, a uh, bulky kind of Togekiss set, that would have been a lot smarter, but at the same time, like, no. Okay, ooh, thought my fucking computer had gone off. Um, but uh, at the same time, I feel like it just wasn't really that good in the matchup. I could have probably brought like a bulky Hooper or something. Regardless of what I brought, I just feel like, you know, it would have just come down to what I expected him to bring, and I expected, you know, D-Knight and Seismato, they made sense in the matchup. He didn't bring it. It happens. But at the end of the day, we were able to scoop up a 3-0 victory. So now we go to 6-0 and with a plus 15 differential, which is ridiculous. Like, this has been a very, very crazy start to the season. Um... There wasn't too much hacks in this game, I don't feel. The only one that really was bad was the uh, Victini versus Charizard speed tires. But like I said, I think the one that really mattered was the D-Claw going off. The Flare Blitz one into Psychic Spadef Drop wasn't really that influential. Um, and I think once I had weakened Victini to that level, I could have potentially gone, um, like I said, into my uh, Scolipede and either threatened the Victini out or, you know, just weakened it to the point where I could just revenge with something else if I had to. I had plays around most things that he did. I also wish I'd kind of been Cobra Berry on Scolopede over being um, Chillan, but at the same time, like if he brought Lanoon, I would have been in a lot of trouble. So I needed the Chillan there to be able to take the hit from Lanoon. Um, other than that, I don't know if the rolls were there with Earthquake or Nascavalier. I feel like they weren't, judging on damage, and then obviously, um, in the late game, if he got that small chance with Hulucha, he would have won. But regardless, great game to Dan. Go check out his channel, guys. Like, he and I are very, very good mates, and um, I really do appreciate his content, and he is a fantastic battler. So please go check out his side. Um, we now are 6-0. and So we've got four weeks left, I believe, of the season before playoffs, and uh, we're looking pretty good. I think one more victory, if I'm not mistaken, looking at how everybody else is shaping up, might be enough to book us into playoffs, which would be pretty sweet. Uh, I'd be pretty stoked with that, to be fair. So hopefully we can do that. I haven't checked who I'm playing yet, but it doesn't really matter to me. Like, the fun thing is, well, the weird thing is, like, this league, um, because I was so focused on the NPO, and I still am to an extent, I haven't really been taking this league as seriously, which I know is terrible, but it's hard when, like, you're focusing so much on a league, especially when you're in playoffs in that league, you really want to do well. So in this one, I've been able to use like more fun sets and having more of a fun time, and it's still working for me, which is just really lovely. Like I'm not trying to brag or anything. It's just really like a lot of like players will know it's really refreshing when you can kind of take a step back from being ridiculously competitive in one league to be a little bit more laid back in a league, but you still have the same kind of results. So it shows that it's not always about maybe being the most like competitive and crazy in that sense. It's like it's okay to be laid back and you can still get the result doing it that way, but I have rambled on for long enough. Like I said, we get the W here. We are 6-0 and o with a plus 15 differential. I believe one more win gets us into playoffs, so that's pretty sweet. I'm getting out of here, though. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure that you um, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're almost at 250 subs. And also, don't forget to comment down below about how you feel the game went. Uh, extra duel, I just want to mention as well, now, after those four kills this week, has overtaken Skolopede as kill leader, and the pair of them, well, Drill now has 12 kills. Scolopede has 9 kills, so after 6 weeks, Drill and Scolopede have combined for 21 kills in the Major PL, which is just insane. So they are just dominating uh, this league. Hopefully we can keep it going. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next MPL video. But this is the bird. I'm out.